All of my listeners were business owners, and we need to address the elephant in the room. We're working in a new environment. The world is changing on a day-to-day basis. Now, behind closed doors, I've been asking myself a lot of hard questions and exploring what forward will look like. I have something personal that I'll be sharing with you soon, and I wanted to note that we are not back to business as usual. The usual is what got us here, especially considering what parts we all play in the unification of the human race. Now, this particular episode, it fits into our normal framework, honoring my commitment to serve my community. As we move forward with our business content, please expect for me to infuse content that is candid, sharing some of the things I'm experiencing and learning in this time. This will be me removing the leader hat and leaning into being the student. I only ask that you stick around and learn with me if you're ready. Stay tuned as we adjust in forward motion. Now on to the show. With this sound pre-launch strategy, you'll get all of that creation taken care of well before your offer is available, and you'll have primed your audience so that they know an offer is coming and will likely be excited to jump on it once it's finally available. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher, and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. Thanks to Gusto for supporting the Gold Digger podcast. Gusto offers modern, easy payroll and benefits for small businesses across the country. They were even named Best Online Payroll by PC Meg. Get three months for free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash gold digger. I remember in the early days of my brand and my business, launching was way more of a battle than this sweet cakewalk. I mean, boundaries, they weren't a thing. They just simply didn't exist. I was basically up all hours of the night, working myself ragged, skipping meals, sitting in front of my desktop for 10 hours straight just to get through it. Like my first launch, it was literally just me, my brand new email list, a few thousand followers and some shaky hands trying to figure out how to get the very first version, my Jenna Kutcher course out into the world. Like I didn't have a team. I didn't have a method. I didn't always know what to do, but I realized that in order to actually be a business, I had to create something to sell and then sell it, meaning that I had to launch it out into the world. I often joke now with my team because our launches are night and day compared to just a few years ago. Like those on my team who have been with me the longest, they know that launching back then was literally about survival, like crazy hours and hoping and praying that my offers would land in the right hands of the right people who needed them the most, but mostly survival. It was all last minute deadlines and late night copywriting and flinging hope filled strategy at the wall like spaghetti noodles and crossing our fingers that our frantic frazzled efforts paid off in the long run. Nowadays, we've got launching down to a T. It's kind of like a spa week in comparison to the launches of past years. And I share this not to say that we have all the answers because we are still learning so much every single week and through every single launch, but I share it because we all start somewhere. We all have a beginning and have to learn through trial and error as we go. And while launching is legitimately one of my most favorite things ever, that was not always the case. It used to completely drain me, like depression pleaded me of everything, my energy, my mood, like, sorry, Drew, my joy, my optimism. It took everything in me to get through a launch without halfway losing it. Just a month ago, I did a live launch for my course, the Pinterest lab. And on the first day of webinars, instead of having pit sweats and endless sinking gut feelings and absolute terror about potentially messing up or losing Wi-Fi in front of thousands of live attendees, I entered the day with confidence and absolute joy to teach my heart out and share this message that I believe in with so many current and future business owners. I took a 10 mile bike ride along the lake shore the morning before going live. I had a lunch between my webinars with my family. I settled into bed early with a book before a solid night's sleep at the end of the day. Like, here's what I mean. I had pure, unabashed spa-like peace as we navigated a launch. Like, 
Drew even commented like, whoa, this is way different than a few years ago, saying just how much less stressful this launch was than launches of the past. And when I asked if he wanted to go on a walk after my last webinar, he was like, are you sure? What? Like, yeah, of course. (laughs) I began to really think about what the biggest change has been to make launches go smooth versus my early days. And truthfully, it comes down to a lot of little things, but one major thing makes the key difference in all of it. I want to talk today about a topic that I don't think we've ever actually covered on the Gold Digger podcast, and that's the pre-launch. If you've created a product or a service, basically any kind of offer to share with the world, then you've likely already launched something. But I truly believe the pre-launch, that period of time before you make the actual offer available and open up the cart, is the make or break for a launch and the goal you want to hit. Too many people are so head down in creating that offer itself, then all of a sudden they finish it up and they have zero energy or brain strength left to put together a strategy. Does that sound familiar? Because I've been there. I've done that. And here's the thing. The longer you warm people up to your offer, the more likely they'll be ready for it when you announce it and the less heavy lifting you'll have to do during the launch itself. Think of the pre-launch as this like appetizer and the main meal is your offer. It's going to be the most satiating entree ever. You want an appetizer that's not too, too heavy, but that primes their palate and gets them excited for what is to come. So today I want to share with you my exact framework for pre-launch, what I do in the days and the weeks leading up to the launch that makes that time way more manageable, light and rewarding. And if you have not grown a team just yet, or you're not sure what it is that you want to launch, or all of this is just a side hustle for you for now, I have a bonus tip for you too. Whether you're in the creation phase, post-launch, or still dreaming up your offer, my hope is that you can use this framework the next time you're getting ready to launch so that you can save yourself from the crazy stress and the late nights like I used to have and instead start experiencing the thrill and the joy that launching can bring. Are you into it? Same here. Let's dive on in. What good is creating something epic if you can't get people to want to pay for it and enjoy it? Like I used to spend so much energy creating my courses and then I just throw together the launches in real time and it hit me. Is the effort of creation worth anything if I'm all out of steam when the important work of getting it into people's hands arrives? If I can't launch in a way that makes people take action and be ready to hit buy, then what is the point? Now, my approach isn't necessarily flipped, but it's more equitable for my energy, meaning instead of only putting my best efforts into the courses and offers, I'm still pouring my guts into those, but I'm also building in margin to allow for plenty of time and energy and space to strive strategize the lead up to the launches. You don't want to be so frantic trying to complete your product right before the launch that you're left creating marketing materials and pitches during the launch itself. With a sound pre-launch strategy, you'll get all of that creation taken care of well before your offer is available and you'll have primed your audience so that they know an offer is coming and will likely be excited to jump on it once it's finally available. I have six essential pieces to a successful pre-launch that I want for you to start mulling over and seeing how you can fit them into your ramp up to your next launch. First up, before you start thinking about launch strategy, maybe even before your offer is totally firmed up, I want for you to begin breadcrumbing. I've talked about this lots of times before, but it's probably one of the most important aspects of launching everything. Like, I don't care what your offer is. Nobody is going to want to buy it if you haven't mentioned a thing about it and suddenly you're shouting from the rooftops that you have this course or a product or a membership for sale. We crave the stories and journeys behind what someone is offering, so let people behind the scenes. I want you to specifically get focused on this three to six weeks before the actual cart opens or the product is made available. You want to be talking about the thing that you've been creating and sharing insights on the topic and helping people to start warm up to the big idea. You can even straight up come out and just say like, hey, I'm launching this thing in a few weeks and here's what it's about and be sure to include some sort of takeaway or value right then and there. 
I've actually seen this more open and direct approach work really well recently. It's not like you're tiptoeing around your offer. You're sharing it with pride in this infectious attitude of getting people as jazzed about it as you are. Think about this. Like if you are creating something that you're passionate about and you know that if you don't go out and sell it well, it's going to be a disservice to the people that you serve, then it's so important that you're dropping these little breadcrumbs and that you're adding value long before you ever go to sell. Help set yourself up as the expert and help people get excited for you as you're sharing this process and this behind the scenes before you go to launch. The next thing that you can do in the lead up to launch is creating and framing content around the biggest questions someone has in order to help them qualify themselves as a potential fit for your offer without you even having to do any selling. So essentially, what problems does your offer solve for others? Answer those questions in your content. Now, an example from that launch that I was talking about earlier for the Pinterest lab is how we created content and even framed the webinars around how Pinterest can be used to grow and scale any kind of business. We published blog posts in the pre-launch period about creative ways that you can use Pinterest for your business. We even created a comprehensive guide to using Pinterest for any business type. I published social content around this topic and intentionally drove home the fact that Pinterest isn't just for saving favorite recipes and home decor inspo which is what the vast majority of us use it for. And I also reiterated that it's not just another social platform. It's this powerful search engine where most of your ideal clients are likely already hanging out. We took this very simple question, can Pinterest work for my business? And provided plenty of opportunities and entryways to discover that, yes, it can work for so many different businesses, most actually. And that paved the path to talking more about how they can learn exactly what to do inside of the Pinterest lab. Can you see how that works? When you can frame that content up in the front end of your launch, it allows people to start qualifying themselves and saying, oh, yeah, that could work work for me. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, maybe I need to dig into this more. Maybe I need to understand that system. That pre-launch piece of framing your content can really pay off in the long run because it's not you just hitting them with a pitch and saying, yes, this is for you. They've already done that hard work of qualifying themselves through your lead-in. The third piece is similar to breadcrumbing, but it's even more direct. And rather than talking about the topic and warming folks up to the idea of your offer, I want for you to clearly begin hinting and teasing about what it is that you're creating one to two weeks ahead of your launch. Listen, we all have this little voyeur in us. It's why reality TV is so popular because we love to see the messy behind the scenes and what it really takes for people to get to where they're going. Like we don't just want the pretty filtered photo on the gram at the end. So show us your messy middle, lean into that. Like talk about the process and what's going on as you lead up to your launch so that people kind of have this radar that you're creating and you're launching something new and you're being real about it, which is high key, one of the quickest, best, ways to get people on your side, cheering you on, empathizing with you and wholeheartedly trusting you. I was letting people in behind the scenes as I was working on my webinar. I was showing different slides. I was asking questions, doing Q and A's on Instagram stories and IG live. And so you want to really just get in this focus of teasing. Like, remember, I always say this, you likely don't have a publicist. And so it is time to become your biggest fan and to get really bold in sharing what it is you're working on so that again, you can continue this pre-launch phase of warming people up for your offer. Next up, I want for you to begin collecting feedback and testimonials in this pre-launch phase so that you can make sure that your offer is crystal clear. You want your messaging to convert and you want to be certain that your offer is the right offer for your audience. Get people you trust to look at your sales page, your email funnel, heck, even the offer itself to get some social proof that you may even be able to use in your marketing materials. At the very least, you'll get valuable insight on anything that might need tweaking to be more clear. And at best, you'll have legit testimonials that you can rework and use throughout your launch efforts so that potential buyers can see the value in that offer. 
I was sending my sales page to friends that were outside of my industry because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't only sharing it with my team, people who are inside of this launch, but people that might have an outside perspective. It's so important that you're inviting people into this process so that you can collect that feedback and make sure that your messaging is super crystal clear by the time you go to launch. Because let me tell you, once you are in a launch, you are going to second guess everything. You're going to want to scrap it all. You're going to want to change it. Someone's going to ask a question and you're going to be like, I thought I answered that. I guess I didn't. And so if you can collect that feedback before you're emotionally invested in a launch, it is going to allow you to redirect course correct and make sure that when you are in the launch, there is no second guessing going on. Yes, of course, you can slightly tweak or answer questions better, but that feedback on the front end is going to save you a lot of time and energy and stress when you're actually in the launch itself. As your business grows, maybe you're ready to grow your team with it, but there's a lot to consider. What about payroll, benefits, and HR needs? All of those employee logistics that you didn't know you would have to know when you started your business? Don't get caught up in all those logistics because you've got gusto. When it comes to filing taxes, running payroll, figuring out benefits, HR, and more, gusto can help. It's an easy online payroll benefits and HR platform built for modern small businesses with all the management tools you need in one place. Gusto automatically files and pays all state, local, and federal payroll taxes, plus the fast, easy-to-run payroll includes W-2s and 1099s for your team, as well as tools to manage health benefits, 401ks, and more for almost any budget. All of your employee paperwork is stored online and on average payroll takes just 11 minutes to run. Get your payroll system in order with Gusto. Get three months for free when you run your first payroll at gusto.com slash gold digger. Try it out at gusto.com slash gold digger. So next, I want to talk about pre-launch ads. And I don't think that ads are necessary for every single launch, especially if it's your first or second go around. I did not start or launch with Facebook ads for a while. But if you are going to do any ads as a part of a launch and you have a limited budget, do your ads in the pre-launch phase to drive people onto your email list through a freebie that is aligned with the topic or offer. Listen to me here. This is important. Once people are on your email list, you have their attention and can warm them up further and add value inside of your emails rather than continuing to try to capture their attention with paid ads. Get this, you will pay significantly less for an ad for a free offer like an opt-in or a freebie in comparison to an ad that is for a bigger ask or that points to your actual paid offer. Snagging their attention early on and getting them onto your email list will pay off way more in the long run. Studies show that for every $1 spent on email marketing, $42 is the average expected return on investment. Like imagine if you were spending your ad budget, growing your email list, and then spending your efforts on converting them there rather than trying to convert a cold audience straight from Facebook or Instagram ads. Now, because of this, we are actually constantly running ads to my free resources to allow us the chance to warm people up to our offers, have a longer runway, and have a lower cost per conversion. So if you even have a $100 ad budget, I would highly recommend that you use that $100 and point people to your free resource that allows them to warm up to you and your future invitations or sales pitches. And it also just gives people value from the beginning without having this big ask or without kicking off your relationship with a sales pitch. Now, the final step is a big one, but it's one of the most vital in this entire pre-launch phase, and it is to prepare everything, everything, everything that you possibly can for your launch on the front end before you even open up your offer or the cart opens so that when you are live, you can focus your energy on just showing up well and being available for people who are ready to potentially become a client or a customer. By working on all of your content, copy, and marketing needs ahead of time, you'll be free to trust what you've built when you weren't in this foggy launch mindset and you'll let it run its course while you are able to just be visible, answer questions and deal with any last second tweaks or adjustments to your strategy. 
My team and I use this platform called Monday. I've raved about it before and we use it to organize our systems and we'll dedicate an entire board inside of Monday to a launch and we'll break down all the different needs from small things like creating pop-ups for my blog to bigger tasks like recording a pre-launch podcast episode, educating on that specific topic. And for me, like seeing it all laid out, this is huge. It allows us to task it out, schedule it out, complete the most heavy lifting before the launch even arrives. Once your offer is ready and you're preparing your pre-launch, I'd recommend just simply listing out everything that you will need for the launch from a sales page and thank you emails to product delivery, email sequences, downsells, bonuses, and beyond so that you can see big picture what it is that's needed and then begin to break it down and plan it out before the actual launch arrives. Now, I know that was a whole lot of strategy and not a lot of time, but my dream is that you take this simple six-part framework, run with it, and make it your own as you prepare for your next launch. If you are starting where I did with just a team of one, aka you, then know that you can execute this exact plan just in a little bit of a watered down way. Like you don't have to have it all figured out. You can move a little slower. You can start a bit smaller, but this framework will support you as you prepare to get your offer out into the world. Let's be honest, launching can be stressful. You work so hard on creating something that you are so passionate about and you're so excited to put it out into the world. You're hoping and praying that it is well received and that it adds value to other people's lives and that people will find it valuable enough to invest in. But launching doesn't have to be super stressful. It doesn't have to feel frantic. And I truly, truly believe that your pre-launch is where the magic can happen. I hate to be all like, you have to plan ahead because that's sort of boring and always what we'd like to do in this perfect world, but rarely have time for in actual execution of the real world. However, having a plan holding yourself to it, and as a result, creating margin for yourself ahead of your launch is going to change the game of what your mental capacity throughout your actual launch will look like and what the results at the end of it will be. When you can create and plan from a place of calm, not last minute chaos, or a feeling of burnt out, like I just got to get this done, you'll feel and see the results in so many more ways than just your peace of mind. You'll have clarity entering the launch. You'll have a bird's eye view of how it's going to go, and you'll be able to to show up for the people who need you the most, who have questions and who need more info. That is the freedom and the beauty of launching with a solid strategic pre-launch. And I cannot wait for you to experience it in a whole new way. Until next time, gold diggers, keep on digging your biggest goals. And I cannot wait to see what you launch next. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 